So Dave, how does the fuel level change the alignment angles? Any change in ride height, so weight added to the vehicle, is going to change the ride height, which is going to change the alignment angles. So some vehicle specifications will actually call for a full tank of gasoline. Okay? Now because of that, you know, we are running tighter tolerances on vehicles equipped with ADAS. Uh, also performance-based vehicles and several of the European uh, vehicles, and I even have an exotic up here right now. they got extremely tight tolerances, and the, the difference of a half tank of gas to a full tank of gas can actually be in specifications or out of specifications. On this particular uh, one right here, we can see that it requires a full tank of gas. This particular one doesn't need any passenger weight. Now, some vehicles do, uh, particularly B BMW was a way of doing them. On some of those particular vehicles, you can have upwards of 500 pounds that needs to be added to the vehicle. And that's a fair amount of work and a fair amount of uh, time to load the vehicle to do it. Their specifications are based off a loaded vehicle instead of an empty vehicle. But this is an also a common way right here is a full tank of gas. Now, maybe you don't have a full tank of gas. Uh, I'm at a half tank. Um, say I have a 20-gallon tank. I can look up specifications pretty easy on that. Gas weighs um, 7 pounds per gallon, so 70 pounds to supplement the missing gasoline here. And then I can correct my ride height that way and do a proper, accurate alignment. So when a car is pulled onto the alignment rack and you're doing your pre-alignment inspection, should you be paying attention to the towing equipment on the vehicle? If they are, you know, towing trailers, boats, where the case may be, and you do have a significant amount of tongue weight, say it's three, 400 pounds, what I'd want to do is add that amount of weight to the rear of the vehicle to supplement so ride height is correct when they are towing. And that's really going to influence the caster on the vehicle. Absolutely, sure. But also, again, it's camber and tow, too. Okay, so another way I could look at this is look at pre-existing tire wear, too. Okay. You know, if they're using it just for uh, towing or something like that, that would actually be one alignment and a different alignment when they're not towing. But when they get into heavier tongue weights, that's one factor you got to kind of factor into it. So taking that actually one step further, if you have a vehicle, you're not taking into account the weight of the fuel, and the technician does an adjustment on the vehicle. Could they set up a vehicle that won't perform the right way or it feel the same way to the customer when they brought it in? You could actually correct the vehicle, and when it is loaded, then you have too much caster. Too much caster uh, can cause uh, a shimmy in the steering. It's going to be a little rougher ride. Road shock is going to pick that up. As uh, far as uh, cornering, that's going to change a little bit. Returnability of the wheel can change also. There are a lot of things can happen uh, when ride height is changed and the wheel alignment angles. So it's a lot easier to make sure you've got a full tank of gas than hoping that you get the right angles on the adjustment. Well, I guess you could say do it right the first time. Definitely. Okay. Thanks, Dave. You bet. <laughs>